Hi, everybody, and welcome to the No Hesitations podcast. I'm your host, Kristen Marvin with Solutions by Kristen. I partner with companies to accelerate their leadership development internally so they can increase retention and operate thriving businesses. I talk about all things leadership, successes, challenges, and every topic in between with the goal of helping you become a better leader. Subscribe or follow and join the conversation each week wherever you find your podcasts because there's no time like the present to listen in and level up. Today, we've got an incredible guest joining the show, Tatiana Timmons. Welcome. So excited to have you here. We are going to be jumping into a coaching session today. Tatiana and I have been working together for quite some time, and we always have a blast together when we do this. So can't wait to introduce you to some more coaching today. Tots is a program specialist within learning and organizational development with the Eliza Group. She started as a recruiter associate, worked her way up to lead recruiter, and has made the switch to learning and made the switch to learning and organizational development in June of 2023. Her mission is to empower and uplift new recruiters, equipping them with the skills to shine in their careers. Prior to the Elias and Group, Tots was in the hospitality industry for 17 years. She's always had a deep passion for training and mentoring and empowering people in recognizing their truest potential. She lives in Denver, Colorado with her husband and 65 plants. I did not know that about you until just now. It's incredible. And she's always amazed by the incredible wonders of nature. And I will add that she does an incredibly stunning job of capturing those moments of nature and all its glory in her wonderful photos. So thanks for being here. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much. And I think I have probably like 64 plants now. I need to update my LinkedIn (laughs) profile. Hey, that's, I think I have 10. So that's, that's incredible. They're a commitment for sure. Yeah. They're, Mm -hmm. they're beautiful. So welcome. Super, super excited. Anything you need before we get started? Uh, Nope. I got my water. I got my stone and my fidget and I am good. Okay. I love it. (laughs) What is on your mind today? Where are we going? Goodness. Um, Well, I just got back from Boston it's always such a high when I go out to Boston and, um, you know, I'm with my team. I get to be with my team um, and and train some of the new recruiters coming in. So, um, yeah, that's I'm just coming down off of a high right now. Um, where would you like to go? <laughs> nice try. Nice try. <laughs> Say a little bit more about Boston. What's there for you in addition to your team? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like I mentioned, I get to train um, new recruiters. This, when I go to Boston twice a year, we um, w- like we're retraining people that have have graduated the program. You know, six to to twelve months after they graduated. Um, so it's just really exciting to be live and in person rather than you know seeing people through a video. Um, yeah, it's kind of like our quote unquote Disneyland. Um, so I'm just, yeah, just, just living on that high right now. How does it relate to Disneyland for you? Um, cause Disneyland is fun and it's exciting. What else? Um, there's, there's definitely roller coasters. Um, you just get this adrenaline when you, when you get to teach people, um, which is what I really love. What does that adrenaline feel like for you emotionally, physically? Um, heart pounding, happiness, joy. Yeah, I don't know. Your eyes are kind of, I know listeners can't see this, but your your eyes are kind of wandering <laughs> off up and to the to the left a little bit. What are you what are you looking for? Um, answers. It's like I I've learned that. I really just like, I have to like, think about what I want to say before I say it. I can't just like come up with something like quickly. And so when I look up, um, I'm, I'm searching my brain for, for answers. How does it serve you to slow down and search for answers before you speak? 
I mean, it helps me to not say things that I regret. Not that I would say anything that I regret right now. Right. Cause like, we're talking about something like really exciting, but um, yeah. We have talked about this subject quite a bit mm-hmm. over the course of the last year that we've been working together and you having, having a hard time finding words mm-hmm. has been in my experience with you, very frustrating. You've been challenging yourself, kind of beating yourself up about that. Yeah. Something's changing here. Yeah. What is Um, it? Probably acceptance. Hmm. Acceptance of like who I am as a human being and like being okay with that. Um, Yeah, I, I was very judgmental of myself. I think that I've like, started to soften a lot this year. I've noticed a lot of softening, um, you know, since you and I have actually talked since January, my goodness, it's been a year almost. Um, yeah. And there's, I mean, just like an acknowledgement that like, I am who I am and I'm trying to love myself through, through all of it, you know? How has that softening kind of benefited you and changed who you are? It's definitely brought more confidence for sure. Um, you know, confidence in in being able to like speak up for what I want, speak up for who I am. Yeah, this is this is hard. <laughs> like being on a podcast is really hard. <laughs> What's hard you know? about it? I like, I'm picturing like all of like the humans listening and maybe some of them know me and maybe some of them don't know me, but like trying to like find the right words, but then also finding the right words for myself, but not necessarily for other people, if that makes sense. Yeah. How can you get present in this moment right now? Well, that's why I have my fidget and my rock is to like, help me remember to, to be present. Who's here right now? You and me and my plants. Yeah. What does accepting that look like? Goodness, I don't even know. Like I wanted to like, it's funny because like, I want it to be good. Like I want what you have to sh- like share and say to like be good. You know. What do you, you want? Can, you can take out all of the you knows too, because I say you know a lot. <laughs> I've noticed. I don't like to edit. Let's talk about. I appreciate you thinking about me and and what you want for me. But what do you want out of this time together? Hmm. I mean, I love our conversations. I love that they just like go to a place that I don't even like know that they're going to go to when we talk. Because usually when we, when we meet up, sometimes I have an idea of what I want to talk about, but I just like to, you know, flow with it. Um, And I feel like when we chat it, like we really flow together. So that's kind of what I want is just to like, see what comes up. What's coming up now that you've said that? I don't know, nothing really. I'm sorry. I feel so boring. You're fine. This is like really confronting. Like being on a podcast is very confronting. I know that there's one or multiple saboteurs coming up for me right now. The judge definitely 
is like, yo, dude, what's going on? Why are you getting uncomfortable right now? We just got uncomfortable for the past three days. Give it a break. <laughs> and maybe a little bit of fear as well is coming into this. Huh. I think like live coaching is actually pretty cool because it brings up all of your sub tours. It's kind of like public speaking. Great. <laughs> what are you noticing now? Uh I'm definitely noticing a little bit of like imposter syndrome coming in and like thinking about like how I should be or, or maybe not necessarily how I should be, but maybe how the world like perceives me to be. Yeah, I don't know. What's the opposite of the judge? Acceptance. Where's your level of acceptance right now? On Probably a scale, like a two. scale of one to 10. Okay. That's like a two. Okay. This is also a reoccurring theme that continues to pop up for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Where do you want acceptance to be? that it's okay <laughs> it's funny like what's coming up for me right now is when like during one of our first conversations um I was talking about like this awkwardness and th like we did talk about acceptance then too and actually something that I was thinking about I remember a couple of weeks ago when I made my appointment with you was accepting myself and my body as I grow older. Wow. So this whole conversation is going to be about acceptance. It's funny, like when I know that I have something to work on and I verbalize it, the universe is like, here you go. Let me put some obstacles in your path to help you learn this lesson really quickly or not quickly, but because it's been a year, but, but just to help you learn this lesson a little bit more. Um, and this is definitely like one of those like big obstacles that I am like moving through I don't think yeah, I think it's more of like moving through obstacles rather than overcoming obstacles what's that make about you moving through them rather than going over them so I think moving through them you like you embody them they become you instead of like moving around them like I, I imagine like hopping over them and not like getting anything from them. But like when you move through them, it's like they they surround you. Yeah, you're doing a lot. Again, I know the listeners can't see this, but you're doing a lot with your hands right now. And you're kind of visualizing what going through these obstacles is like. Is there an image or metaphor or color or something that you can put to that? Yeah, it kind of looks like just like a big rock, a big gray rock. I don't like a squishy rock though, because you can't really go through a hard rock. Um, but yeah, maybe like a darker gray, squishy rock. 
How tall is that rock? I mean, I can jump over it. It's probably, actually, it's probably like five feet, I would say. Where's the rock? In front of me. Inside, outside, what's the environment like around you? Just white. It's just a blank, blank canvas. So it's just you and this five foot squishy rock, dark gray rock. There's nothing around you. It's just simply you against the obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to move through it? <laughs> Why are you Let laughing? Me... Because I'm imagining the costume that I'm going to wear during my like while I move through the rock. Let's talk about oh. the costume. Okay, great. I'm wearing <laughs> I'm wearing a cape. Like a superwoman cape. And red and blue are definitely my power couple uh power colors. Yeah. So I'm just gonna power through this rock like I'm superwoman. Is that all you're wearing as a cape? No, I gotta wear clothes too. What no. else is what else <laughs> makes your costume up? Hmm. Leather. <laughs> like leather tights and boots. Like imagine, imagine Superwoman. Have you seen Superwoman? Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. Like badass woman charging through that rock what's your describe the charging what's your body language what's your stance hmm. like i can picture it um it's like a power stance you know like head held high about to about to charge through about to run through will you embody this for me right now can we do this stance together sure okay okay hey we're getting ready to charge <laughs> show me the charge stance Okay. Okay, so arms are up. One's in front of the other. Head is up. Okay. Left foot is forward. Okay. What are you looking at? The rock. What's standing in between you and the rock right now? Blank space. What else? Fear. But also... I think, no, fear's not standing in front of me. Fear's standing like right behind me. And she's like, are you sure you want to do this? But I do. It's interesting to me that fear is behind you. Is that fear pushing you? No, I think this? fear. No, I think fear is trying to hold me back. Okay. So maybe hanging on to the cape. Mm -hmm. mm, no, she's just in my ear. Like right behind me. What do you know about fear from the conversations that we've had? That fear can actually be an ally too in certain situations. Um, fear, you know, yeah, fear can be a friend. Um, I've actually learned to accept some of my fear, and I've actually learned to like recognize when fear comes up um my mom gave me a bracelet has the has a little fake shark tooth on it to remind me of our first conversation about fear when we um made it into a shark i still have the shark on my desk um reminding me every day that that fear is okay um and fear can actually like motivate you to do things as well. I think fear is healthy. You know, if we didn't have fear, 
I mean, we wouldn't be alive, right? We would just do stupid things. Yeah, so I've learned to befriend my fear. And that's, I think that's why she's behind me rather than standing in my way. Very noticing. Yeah. Let's charge through the rock. What's on the other side? Okay. You know, what's really funny. <laughs> so we've been talking about like this rock and this fear and everything. And I don't even remember what the obstacle was that we started talking about in the beginning. Like, it's just this like picture of a super Tatiana about to charge a rock. Knowing that like on the other side is something amazing, but I don't even remember what the obstacle was. Yeah. And I don't think the obstacle has to be one specific thing, right? It's just a metaphor for obstacles in your life in general. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So what's on the other side? Definitely growth. Yeah, growth is on the other side. But no, maybe growth is like in it. Just a new version of myself is on the other side. Because growth equals obstacle. Growth equals pain. But on the other side of growth is liberation is a new way of seeing things perspective M maybe acceptance too so <laughs> if acceptance was at a two earlier in the conversation what number would you label acceptance as now I definitely label it higher. Let's go probably like a six or a seven are the two numbers that are popping up in my head. Why didn't you say four? Because that, I don't know, it just doesn't, that number just didn't seem relevant at that time. Six and seven are the two numbers that like I like saw. What does this new version of you feel like? With acceptance at a six or a seven. And then I still have room to grow, but I'm making progress. That's kind of like how I see this entire year. I've definitely made a ton of progress this year. I do know there's always going to be room for growth, though, right? Like, I don't think I'll ever be at a 10. I don't even think acceptance will be at a 10 ever. Let's go back to that moment where you were just talking about how much progress you've made this year. There was a complete energy shift with you and your confidence. You had this like side smile, smirk, your confidence just really showed up. Yeah. Say more about that progress. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, well, I left a job that was no longer serving me. I am in this new position with these just badass bosses. Um, I still wake up every day, like pinching myself. Like, is this my reality? Is this like, I'm like, I'm kind of waiting to wake up from a dream. Right. Um, I just feel happy and content and excited and inspired for life. Um, you know, I've found my, I've, I've, I've refound my creativity. 
um, and my motivation to, to be with my friends and, and hang out with my friends on a regular basis. Goodness, so much has changed this year. I've done a lot of like a lot of personal growth, a lot of like personal development. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, I was making a ton of money. And I realized that money does not equal happiness. Um, and I always thought that, you know, like, like I make six figures and, I, and I'll get there and I'll get happy. And that, that just wasn't the case. Like I was miserable. And so I took a pretty big pay cut in my job. I took about a $40,000 pay cut. I mean, granted, I was making commission. So, but still like it, it was a pretty big pay cut. And I don't think I've ever been happier. And so like realizing that and everything that I've like done this year, like that's what makes me smile. That That's what makes me like just appreciate this journey that I've been on. Is there some sadness or something coming up for you right now? No, I think it's more of... Like you want something for like a really, really long time and you get that thing. And then you just realize like it's not what you thought it was going to be, you know? And then you go back to wanting something that's not what it was that you wanted. So for example, like money, right? My whole life, I was like, I want to make a ton of money. Like money is going to make me happy. Money is going to like fix all of my problems. I mean, yeah, I paid off debt, which was fantastic. And I'm super proud of myself for that. Um, but man, just like live in the grind and losing myself in that process. Like, yeah, I made money, but I was miserable. And now, yeah, like I have to budget a lot more, which is fine because I learned how to do that. Right. Um, But I'm just, I don't know. Like, I just, I feel so much better now than January 1st. What do you need to accept in this moment? Or want to accept, I should say, not need. What do I want to accept in this moment? Thanks for your patience. Well, I think. Well, I want to accept this feeling. I want to like continue to have this feeling, you know, even when I'm farther into this position, knowing that I don't need a ton of money to survive. I don't need a ton of money to be happy. So I want to hold on to this.
Yeah, I just I just need to remember this. What's something you want to do, a commitment you want to make to yourself in order to hold on to this acceptance? I need like I need to remember it somehow. I do want to commit to myself that if I do ever find myself in a position that doesn't serve me mentally or emotionally or even physically, that I can leave it and I can find something else that will help me to feel like this. Because you never know, like you never know what's going to happen you know, things, things could, like, I could get laid off tomorrow uh, and I might have to find another job at some point. Like that's just the reality of it. And if I do ever find myself in a position that I was in, you know, before, um, that I have the power to change it. What does that look like? What changing it? Like change it, like if I were, if I were to be in a position that I was in before and, and I needed to change it, like, what does it look like to change it? How would you know? Oh, I like have panic attacks. I'd cry. Mm. So panic attack is a trigger for you mm. physically. Absolutely. Yeah. That something needs to change. Yeah, absolutely. Because you had panic attacks in the beginning when we were meeting. Yeah. And now they're gone. Yeah. I haven't had a, pa- a panic attack and like, I don't know how long, at least since May. So let's put some action to this. Okay. What commitment do you want to make to yourself if you have a panic attack? Get the fuck out. Excuse my language. Get out. What does that mean? <laughs> um... Like, I can't stay there. Like, wh- whatever I'm in, I know that that's, like, my body and my soul telling me that this is not the right place for you. So I need to honor that, and I need to get out and do something else, look for something else. Because I think that there's a difference between, like, the good fear and the fear that's, like, trying to, like, tell you something, like, shake you and wake you up. And I think I understand like what both of those fears are. So if you have a panic attack and you use that as a trigger, Mm -hmm. are you going to immediately quit your job or is that going to trigger you to start looking for something or what what does that trigger? What kind of action is that trigger going to set into place for you? So I think that, I think that depends though, right? Cause like, is it one panic attack or is it, like were other things happening to elicit that panic panic attack? Um, I definitely have to see like how my energy was. So I'd also like be too tired to do anything, be too tired to do yoga, be too tired to hang out with friends, um, be too tired to do the things that, you know, bring me joy. So all of that together, then I would have, then I would have to look and be like, okay, this is not for me. And is this something you can do on your own or do you need some, do you need an accountability partner? Um, well, I could definitely recognize it on my own. I guess in that moment, I might need an accountability partner because I, I mean, I would definitely, you know, seek advice from friends or coaches yeah Who's um, somebody that you would seek advice from specifically mm, i have a couple of really good girlfriends well first and foremost pete's my husband um but then i have a couple of really good girlfriends that i could seek advice from for sure what would it look like for you to have a conversation with them after this call and say hey i recognize that panic attacks trigger something's off 
next yeah. time, if I ever have one again, can I let you know? And will you help me get curious about what's going on in my life and what needs to change? Yeah, absolutely. They would put on their boots and their capes and superwoman costumes and stand right next to me. And then you can figure out how to get through that rock. Yeah. With okay. some friends. Okay. I think we're there. Yay. Do you agree? Anything else you need? No, I definitely think that we're there. Okay. Thank you so much. This is always so fun. You lean into this so, so hard. And it's always a blast to to play around and visualize with you. And and it's an honor to work with somebody who is just so committed to to personal development. And you've been on such an incredible journey and it's been, it's been absolutely a blast to be on this <laughs> with you. So thank you for that. Thank you. It's definitely been a blast with you as well. Absolutely. Okay. We are going to wrap up the show then everybody subscribe and listen each week, wherever you find your podcasts and be sure to follow me on LinkedIn at Kristen dash Marvin and subscribe to the restaurant solutions newsletter for more restaurant leadership tips. And if you're interested in coaching, feel free to call my cell 719-494-6074. Thanks everybody. Talk to you soon.